Okay, fellow mechanics and YouTube viewers, um, as a lot of mechanics do, we look to YouTube and the internet because uh, someone's figured something out before and we don't want to reinvent the wheel, so why not see what someone else did to make a fix. Every now and then I can't find a video on what my problem is, so when that happens I make one. I'm in a 2008 Mini Cooper Clubman S. Um, anything from 2007 to, gosh, I don't know what year it goes to, 2011, 2012, who knows. Um, as long as it's the R56 or R55 um, automatic gear shifter. What my problem is, is I can move this gear shifter um, without touching the brake or anything. Um, you hear that little pop. There's something wrong with the... There's something wrong with the interlock. I'm not touching the brake. The key's not in the, in the ignition. And you see how it just it, it likes to pop like that. And every now and then, I get this nice little message. Actually, most of the time, I get this message. Reading the code, it is A zero B six. So that's Alpha zero Bravo six. And um, there's a few things online and there's a tech service bulletin I guess that uh, you can make an adjustment at the transmission lever um, underneath the hood and if that doesn't work uh, they want you to replace this whole piece down here at least that's what Mini says and this whole piece is like 500 bucks for the shifter and I guess you could find some used for like a 150 bucks or whatever but I want to try to fix this thing and you can see that the center council I've removed it um, it's in the back seat you can't see it very well but it's back there and then there's some other miscellaneous parts here um, that I've removed cup holder bracket and some other stuff that goes up in there anyway once you get the center council out of the way there's this plastic piece right here you remove it underneath here is the shift interlock. Now this plastic lever seems to be a little bit loose and moving around. There's a little spring to it. And I know that this is the park release lever because this little yellow um, piece here comes up to this loop. And this is when the actual electronic interlock breaks or you don't have a battery in your car. You uh, you pop this piece out, and you can get to this um, yellow loop. Grab it and pull it, and then you can pull it out of gear. And the other end of that, when you pull it, it pushes this lever like that. So there's something broken in here, and I'm going to be taking this whole gear shifter out to um, get it on a table and take a closer look at it. So. I know that uh, I'm going to have to remove some exhaust and a heat shield and obviously disconnect it from the transmission. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, probably won't show a video of that, but once I get this shifter out, uh, I'll cut back to the video. Alright, I said I was going to skip ahead and not show how to remove the gear shifter, but I figured, heck, I'm doing it, why not? After you got the uh, center console out, disconnect two electrical cables. There is a black one right here. Uh, I left my light underneath the car that plugs into that guy right there and a white one right here that plugs into the park reverse neutral drive thingy right here. Unless of course you've taken this off completely and then you can just uh, remove this but I'm gonna leave it on and wiggle it through. Um, there's been horror stories about people trying to pull this uh, this knob off on the top here. So I'm gonna leave that on. I'm gonna wrap that thing around there just like so and you'll see it'll it'll fit out the hole in a second. And underneath the hood you have to remove the airbox. Airbox is gone along with the tubing and then right down here I touch it um, where the camera go? Here it is. There is a, shit, just dropped the washer. I'll have to find that. 
Anyway, 13 millimeter nut and then pull the cable out. I've already pulled the cable out and um, and sorry it's so dark. It's right here. I'm moving it around. So I'm going to be pulling it out the, at the bottom of the car. So I'll remove the airbox, undo the 13 millimeter nut that's on the actual selector level of, lever of the transmission, unclip a plastic clip back there that supports the cable, and then start feeding it down through. Now I'll go underneath the car. All right, here's the exhaust hanging down. Um, you can probably do this in any order you want. Um, right down here is the uh, exhaust support shield. I don't know what the heck you want to call it. There's some, uh, what is there, six bolts that hold that on. It's held on right here, right in the middle of the car. And then after you remove that, um, the exhaust oh gosh, here we go. clamps up here and of course this clamp holds it on. So you take the bolt out of that and I, I took a couple of vice grips and spread this clamp and moved it up there and this will come out. Um, of course it will still be held up by its rubber softeners right here that um, go right on there. You just pry those off, you know, put some PB blaster Brake clean, Vaseline, whatever lubricant, heck, uh, dishwasher soap would work too. And then just pry against the uh, the control arm uh, stabilizer bar. And then I just used three zip ties and and loop, looped it up there. And then lastly, you gotta take the heat shield out. Here's the heat shield laying on the ground. There is one, two three, four bolts on this side, and same thing on the other. Um, where is it? One, two, three, and four. And then you just kind of bend that thing off, and then you can see the gear shifter box right there. All right, so I'm gonna take these bolts out, these Allens right here. I'm sorry, they aren't Allens, Torx. Uh, four of them undo this cable support bracket that's right here and again I've already got it loose from up top I should be able to just pull the whole assembly down and get it out of the car if you got a lift you could probably do this in roughly half an hour or 45 minutes to get to this point alright I got the shifter out um, probably moved too fast without taking enough video here but uh, basically the shifter piece is in two halves um, and it's held together by these clips right here. So just take off all the clips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight clips. Take off the rubber seal. Uh, the rubber seal holds these bolts in. And here's the shift lock solenoid. See where it gets its power. And there's a sensor right here on top. And that's what this little guy does. Um, it pivots in here like so but this poor piece has been shattered into four and I imagine that this part here is unavailable separately from this whole assembly so gotta figure out what to do about that I'm either gonna repair this glue it all back together with some Gorilla Glue because uh, really it shouldn't um, take that much pressure unless you're really rough on the park um, trying to pull it out which is probably what happened at one point in time someone was probably pulling this thing too hard and snapped this thing into pieces um, unfortunately so I'm gonna do some research on how to get this piece or fix this piece alright I'm back um, you know there is a part number on this thing I don't know if you're able to see it uh, it's stamped in here that uh, camera's not going to focus on it. It's even hard to read without the uh, without the camera on it. But I did some searching around, and it looks like you can't buy this part, uh, just as I suspected. So I took the four pieces, fit them all back together, and I don't ever like glues. They never work, especially in this type of application. It would not be good to glue this. If this thing breaks again, you're going to be tearing it all apart again. So get out the... Uh, uh, soldering iron, put it on a nice hot setting, and one by one I put these pieces back together and uh, basically welded them back together. You just kind of go, you know, along the line and 
solder them, weld them back together. So shut this guy off. You know, I gave this thing a pretty good test. Um, put the camera down here. You know, wiggling it around. It's uh, it's damn solid now. Really good. Happy with that. So this saves me 500 bucks from a dealer and 150 dollars from a junkyard or eBay. And basically, it just fits right back in here like so. And you can see um, it's got a tab down here and uh, the shaft fits in here and this piece here goes right against where that solenoid is going to be pushing it out to unlock it from the cable. So now I'm just going to put it back together. Okay, she's all back together now and before I put it back in you know, you just want to test everything, make sure it's working right. So, uh, let's see if I can do this here. I don't know if that's going to work. I don't think I can do this one-handed. Um, but anyway, I'm putting an elbow on it. If you press this button and try to move it, it's in park. It won't work. But this little tab down here, then you can push this tab back. Yeah, I knew I couldn't do this one-handed. gonna fall there we go I'm gonna push that tab back see right now it's locked in the park but if I push this little tab boom there we go that's what that solenoid does that solenoid inside of here pushes this piece back to unlock it of course this is a sensor um, on what position this is in if you ever have a dead battery or this vehicle is stuck for whatever reason you can't get it out of park solenoids bad or whatnot pop this thing off pop this trim piece off underneath there there's this yellow release lever grab that loop and when you pull this up see as I pull it moves that white piece that'll release you from park don't force it the minute you go to force this thing is when this piece breaks so I'm going to put it back in the car now. Okay, the gear shifter is back in the car. You can see the exhaust is no longer hanging down. Basically, you, uh, after you put the shifter in and you do the four Torx bolts on it and put the little rubber grommet into uh, its holder uh, for the cable, you put the heat shield on, put the uh, six nuts back on for that. There are three, three that look like this. On this side, three that look like that on that side, and then um, two of these black ones here and there. So after that's up, then you put the exhaust on. Getting these rubber boots back on can be a pain. I recommend just get some 530 oil on your finger and, and lube this up before you try pushing it on. You can also use, again, like dish soap, Ajax, you know, cheap stuff. Then after that, you put this uh, little cross member back on. Um, the little brace back here and then oh you aren't gonna be able to see this but the, the cable is routed up here and goes right there up to the transmission so I'm gonna lower the vehicle uh, finish putting the cable on the transmission the air box back on reconnect the electrical connections inside the car and then put the center console back on and hopefully this thing works. As it's going back together, here's a better shot of it. This is the cable coming in. There's a bracket it attaches to. This thing's incredibly simple to get off. All you literally need to do is pull this back like so and then pull up. And there's a nut right here. 13 millimeter nylon nut um, that that rod goes through. To set this thing, just put the gear shifter in park, make sure that this lever's in park, and tighten this thing down. I think it's 12 uh, nm, but you know, I, I just put the uh, good old German Guten tight. So here's a quick shot of the uh, air box back in. Um, I didn't do a tutorial on how to get that in. If, if you need uh, instructions on how to get that air box out, check another video, but if you need that instruction, 
probably shouldn't be attempting the procedure that I'm describing in this video. All right, folks, here's the final product. Um, you will notice that when I pull this lever in and try to get it out of park, it's not going to go. But I don't want to push too or pull too hard because that's how that piece broke in the first place. Is someone grabbing this and yanked it back. If you ever have somebody tow your vehicle, like your battery's dead, you got to get it out of a lot or whatnot, they either need to put the wheels, the front wheels, on dollies so they can push it around, or they need to pull this trim piece out. And underneath the trim piece, like I said on the other segment of this video, there's that yellow loop that you pull, and when you pull that loop, you'll be able to pull this thing back. But how it should work is when the ignition is on and you press your foot on the brake, there's that solenoid in there that pushes that little white plastic piece that I welded back together and it pushes it so it unlocks and allows you to pull this back. So let's test this out. Alright, so in order to do this you're going to have to turn your ignition on to when all your lights get on. And again, I'm not touching the brake. I'm not able to get this out. I push the brake down Boom, there we go. And you can even feel that solenoid. Pushing that piece of plastic. So there you go. This will save roughly, I don't know, 150 to $500. Uh, 500 bucks I think is what they cost at the dealer for these shifters. I think the cheapest one I found on eBay was 150. And all this was was just a little bit of time. You're going to have to put as much time into it as I did um, replacing this thing. So if you can uh, take it apart and look inside there, um, maybe we can resolve your problem. I got my Maxi Diag connected here so I can clear the code. It was giving me the, once again, A0B6 shift interlock uh, problem code. So I want to make sure that's cleared out of the computer and away I'm going to go.